Hello aspirants, welcome to Daily News Analysis by Shankar IS Academy. The list of topics chosen for today is displayed on the screen. We have also provided page number of these topics in various editions. Interested aspirants can go through them. Now let us begin our discussion. Now look at this news article. This news article is regarding Supreme Court Collegium System. See in the past one month, Collegium System has been constantly in the news. This is because the system has made lot of recommendations. For example, it made recommendations regarding appointment of eight new chief justices of I courts. It also recommended transfer of five I court chief justices. In addition to that, the system also recommended shuffling of 28 I court judges. So, in the last one month, the collegian system has recommended over 100 judicial appointments and several transfers. This is why this topic is very important. It is constantly in the news. And it is also overlap of static portion as well as current affairs portion. So it has a high chance of being asked. Very, very important topic. So please pay attention. So based on this context, let us discuss about collegium system. See, we all know that India follows collegium system. The system is used to appoint the judges of higher judiciary. Now let us come to the most important point. The origin of collegium system. See, the system was not enacted by an act of parliament. The first important point. It was also not enacted through a provision of the constitution. Not enacted by act of parliament. Not enacted through a provision of constitution. Then how did this system emerge? See, the system evolved through the judgments of the Supreme Court. These judgments are called as judges case. And based on this judges case, the system has emerged. I hope aspirants can follow. This point is very important because in prelims you can expect these kind of statements. Supreme Court Collegium system was enacted by an act of parliament. Which of the above statements are correct? So these kind of statements can be expected in prelims. So remember, Collegium system emerged and evolved only through the judgments of Supreme Court cases. These cases are called as judges case. Now moving on to the next important point. See in India we have two types of Collegiums. One is Supreme Court Collegium, another is High Court Collegium. First, let us see about Supreme Court Collegium. See, Supreme Court Collegium is headed by Chief Justice of India. In addition to the Chief Justice, Supreme Court Collegium comprises of four other senior most judges of the Supreme Court. Chief Justice of India, four other senior most judges of the Supreme Court. This is the composition of Supreme Court Collegium. Now, moving on to High Court Collegium. See, High Court Collegium is led by the Chief Justice of the High Court. The first important point. In addition to the Chief Justice of the High Court, High Court Collegium consists of four other senior most judges of the particular High Court. I hope aspirants can follow. Chief Justice of High Court, four other senior most judges of that particular High Court. So this is the main difference between the Supreme Court Collegium and High Court Collegium. The composition is different. See, remember one thing. The recommendation of I Court Collegium reaches the government only after getting approved by the Chief Justice of India and Supreme Court Collegium. This point is very important. For example, take Chennai I Court. Chennai I Court will have a Collegium system. It will have the Chief Justice of Chennai I Court and four other senior judges of that Chennai I Court. This will be the Collegium system of Chennai I Court. They will make the decision and they will recommend it to the government. But before going to the government, it will go to the Chief Justice of India and the Supreme Court Collegium. They should give their approval, then only it can go to the government. See, when we are learning about Collegium system, we should also know about NJAC. What is NJAC? NJAC stands for National Judicial Appointments Commission. See, NJAC is a constitutional body. This body was proposed to replace the present Collegium system of appointing judges. The most important point. And it was established through the 99th Amendment Act in 2014. 99. Remember this number. See, after amending the constitution, the parliament also passed a law called National Judicial Appointments Commission Act 2014. This act was passed to regulate the NJAC's functions. According to this act, NJAC will consist of six people. Who are those six people? Chief Justice of India. The Chief Justice of India will be the chairperson of NJAC. In addition to the Chief Justice of India, there will be two more senior judges of the Supreme Court, Law Minister and two eminent person. So this will be the composition of NJAC. But remember, 
this body is not in practice we have only the collegium system njac is not right now in practice this is because supreme court of india declared 99th constitutional amendment and njac act to be unconstitutional and void we all know that independence of judiciary is a basic structure of indian constitution and supreme court believed that 99th constitutional amendment and njac act affects the independence of judiciary so it declared NJAC Act and 99 Constitutional Amendment as unconstitutional and void. So right now we do not have NJAC. We are only following Collegium System. So these are the important points regarding Collegium System. Very very important topic from prelims as well as mains perspective. And remember this year the Collegium System has been constantly in the news. It is being super active, so it may get the attention of the examiner. Make sure you revise this topic five or six times before the exam. So with this we have come to the end of the discussion now moving on to the next topic now take a look at this editorial see in yesterday's discussion we saw about nclat nclat stands for national company law appellate tribunal in yesterday's discussion we discussed about this body we discussed about nclat structure nclat function and nclat appointments but in today's discussion we'll discuss about the issues surrounding nclat we'll discuss the problem surrounding the nclat this is the main content in this editorial very very important topic from mains perspective so let us discuss the important points highlighted in this editorial the syllabus relevant to this discussion is displayed on the screen interested aspirants can go through it see india has many tribunals we all know this but we should also know that most of these tribunals have many vacancies our central government is delaying the appointment of judges to this tribunals it is hesitating so because of these vacancies the tribunals are not functioning to their full capacity they are struggling so finally our supreme court of india interfered the court finally intervened and asked the central government to fill the vacancies in these tribunals so following the supreme court order our central government finally made some appointments to the NCLAT and ITAT tribunals as i already said NCLAT stands for National Company Law Appellate Tribunal and ITAT stands for Income Tax Appellate Tribunal i hope aspirants can follow now coming to the issue see the issue is surrounding the appointments made to this tribunal let me explain this issue see the appointment to this tribunals are made by a committee called search cum selection committee this search cum selection committee shortlist the eligible candidates who can be appointed to these tribunals they provide a list this list is sent to the government and it is approved by the appointments committee of the cabinet this is the process let me repeat the search cum selection committee it creates a list of eligible candidates and this list is sent to the appointments committee of the cabinet the appointments committee of the cabinet approves this list and finally the appointments are made this is the process this is where the issue starts see the supreme court of india has detected some procedure irregularities in the appointment of the judges to the tribunals our court has found issues in the appointment process it has detected some procedural irregularities now let us discuss what is that procedural irregularity see as i already said search cum selection committee it shortlists the eligible list of candidates and it prepares a list this list given by the search cum select committee has two parts what are those two parts the first part is a list which contains the priority names this list has the priority names and the most suitable candidates for the appointment this is the first part now moving on to the second part the second part has wait listed candidates So these are the two parts given by the search cum select committee the priority list and wait listed candidate list so this list will be sent to the central government and the central government will make the appointments see the central government while making the appointments it has to take the names from the first list that is the priority list only after exhausting the first list it should go for the wait listed candidates without exhausting all the names in the first list the center should not go for the wait listed candidates this is the protocol 
but recently this protocol has not been followed this is the main irregularity found by our supreme court of india without exhausting the first list our central government has made appointment from the wait listed category so instead of giving priority to the first list that is the most eligible candidate it has directly gone for the wait listed candidates this is called as cherry picking of names this is a first issue found by supreme court of india cherry picking of candidate names now moving on to the next issue what is the next issue found by the supreme court of india see the central government while appointing new judges for tribunals send the incumbents who still had tenure on leave this is the second major issue let me explain see take a tribunal x okay this tribunal x will have a chairman this chairman will have a tenure only after the expiry of that tenure the new chairman should be appointed but center has bypassed this the central government has directly appointed the new names and asked the incumbents that is the existing chairman to go on leave this was done by a central government to accommodate the new names of their choice the central government wants its people in the tribunals so it has asked the incumbents to go on leave and it has appointed new members for example take nclat as i already said nclat stands for national company law appellate tribunal in this tribunal justice chima was the acting chairman his tenure was expiring on september 20th but even before the expiry of his tenure central government appointed justice venu gopal to the post of chairman of nclat the central government forced justice chima to go on leave even before his expiry of tenure i hope as prince can follow so finally justice chima approached supreme court of india supreme court of india found merit in justice chima's argument and has reinstated him until the expiry of his term so supreme court of india finally intervened and has put a stop to this irregularity the central government cannot force the incumbents to go on leave just because it wants to appoint the people it favors see according to supreme court of india there are pending verdicts from justice chima so changing the judge in this crucial juncture can create problems these pending verdicts will be affected the new justice venu gopal should start these cases from first so it will cause a delay this is the logic behind supreme court of india so finally it reinstated chima and it has asked the central government to stop these procedural irregularities in the appointment see when we are talking about tribunal appointments we should also know about tribunal reforms act 2021 our central government has defended its action based on this controversial act tribunals reforms act 2021 see earlier this act was a ordinance the name of the ordinance is tribunals reforms rationalization and conditions of service ordinance 2021 this ordinance was very controversial some of the provisions of this ordinance were struck down by the supreme court of india for example take cases like madras bar association versus union of india 2020 madras bar association versus union of india 2021 in these cases the supreme court of india intervened and struck down the provisions of tribunal reforms ordinance 2021 but our central government is very smart it has include the same controversial struck down provisions in the tribunal reforms act 2021 so the provisions which were struck down is now included in the tribunal reforms act 2021 and the center has been using this act to defend its action this issue was also pointed out by supreme court of india making appointments based on this controversial act has got the anger of the supreme court our central government is facing the wrath of the supreme court so these are the important points highlighted in this editorial see according to the author of this editorial the center is using the procedural glitches to make appointments in the tribunals it is serving its political agenda the center wants its people in these tribunals it is not following the protocols it is also bypassing the orders of the supreme court of india this has affected the transparency of the appointment process it also affects the integrity of the office so what can be done see according to supreme court of india we should establish national tribunals commission 
only national tribunals commission can make the appointment process more objective and transparent very very important point you can use this point as value addition in your mains answer in mains answer in the solution part you can include this point as value addition national tribunals commission only national tribunals commission can make suitable appointments it can evaluate the functioning of tribunals it can make the process more transparent so this is the way forward according to supreme court of india we should create national tribunal commission to make the process more objective and transparent so these are the important points highlighted in this editorial with this we have come to the end of the discussion in this discussion we saw about the issues surrounding nclat what was the issue not exhausting priority list that is the cherry picking of names and next issue is asking the incumbents who still have tenure to go on leave after discussing these issues we also discussed about tribunal reforms act 2021 we also discussed about tribunal reforms ordinance 2021 why this act and uh, ordinance were controversial and finally we discussed the way forward what is the way forward national tribunals commission this is the way forward this commission can make the appointment process transparent and objective now moving on to the next topic now look at this news article this news article is regarding agreement on agriculture by wto see recently our union ministry of commerce and industry expressed an opinion this opinion was regarding wto's agreement on agriculture what was the opinion according to a minister the agreement on agriculture is riddled with deep imbalances these imbalances favors the developed countries it is disadvantages to the developing countries this is the opinion expressed by our union ministry of commerce and industry as i already said this opinion is on wto's agreement on agriculture so in this context let us know about wto very very important topic from prelims perspective first what is wto world trade organization this is the full form of wto See WTO is a global international organization. It deals with rules of trade between nations. It is headquartered at Geneva, Switzerland. Now let us come to the most important point. See WTO came into being in 1995. So this is the year of establishment of WTO. Before WTO we had a organization called GATT. GATT stands for General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade. GATT was established after Second World War. This GATT was the predecessor to WTO. Another important point. Now coming back to WTO. What is the main function of WTO? See, the main function of WTO is to ensure that trade flows are smooth, predictable, and free. This is the main function of WTO. See, WTO has 160 members. These 160 members accounts for 95% of world trade. This is why this organization is very important. Almost 95% of world trade. is under wto monitoring now let us come to india since we are preparing for civil services let us discuss india from the perspective of wto see india has been a member of wto since 1st january 1995 to put it in simple words india has been a member of wto since its origin what about gatt india was also member of gatt since 8th july 1948 so we have been member of gatt and after gatt wto was formed and we have been the member of wto from its origin see know this important point if a government wants to join wto then that government has to bring its economic and trade policies in line with wto rules only if they bring their economic policies and trade policies in line with wto rules then the government can become a member of wto very very important point now let us talk about the roles of wto see wto has many roles it operates a global system of trade rules it acts as a forum for negotiating trade agreements it settles trade disputes between its members it also supports the needs of the developing countries so it plays many roles now aspirants may have a question how wto makes decision so let us talk about wto decision making see wto is run by member governments All the major decisions are made by the membership as a whole. These decisions are made either by the ministers or the ambassadors or delegates of the member countries. So all major decisions are made by the membership as a whole, 
and the decisions are normally taken by consensus see this is the uniqueness of wto it differs from world bank and imf in this way in wto power is not delegated to a board of directors it is not delegated to a organization set as i already said all the major decisions are made by the membership as a whole this is the uniqueness of wto i hope aspirants can follow now let us discuss about the funding of wto see the contributions by the member countries is a major source of income for wto it forms a major part of its annual budget the contributions of the member countries are established according to a formula based on the share of international trade so based on this formula the member countries will contribute to wto and this contribution forms a major source of income for wto so these are the important points regarding world trade organization very very important topic from prelims as well as mains perspective in prelims you can expect factual based questions in mains you can expect analysis based questions so with this we have come to the end of the discussion in this discussion we saw about wto the origin of wto the predecessor of wto india and its role in wto we also discussed about the many roles of wto we discussed about the decision making body of wto and finally we discussed the funding of wto with this we have come to the end of the discussion now moving to the next part now look at this news article this news article is regarding ncbs see ncbs stands for national center for biological sciences the center is located in bengaluru and recently this organization is under multiple allegations it is facing lot of allegations see these allegations are regarding data manipulation in their publications many experts believe that national center for biological sciences have manipulated the data in their publications this is why this organization is mentioned in the news so let us see about it see organization mentioned in the news is very important from prelims perspective so let us learn about ncbs the national center for biological sciences see this organization was constituted in the year 1991 30 years before now we have a question what is the purpose of this organization see this organization conducts fundamental research in biology it tries to understand the living systems see cell biology is fundamental to all biology in order to fully understand living system we should understand the working of cell this is why this organization is very important it tries to understand cell biology it conducts lot of fundamental research regarding cell biology see this organization takes ideas from other disciplines for example it takes ideas from physics it takes ideas from computer science it takes ideas from multiple disciplines and conducts research regarding cells by doing this it tries to understand the living systems it tries to understand the functioning of cells understanding the functioning of cells is very important by understanding the functioning of cells we can develop better medicines so this organization plays a important role in the field of regenerative medicines the most important point now moving on to the next important point see ncbs not only conducts research in biology it conducts fundamental research from diverse fields of biology for example biochemistry biophysics bioinformatics neurobiology cellular organization and signaling genetics and development theory and modeling of biological systems ecology and evolution so ncbs conducts fundamental research from diverse fields of biology this is why this organization is very important see in addition to the fundamental research ncbs also engages in number of collaborative initiatives for example it engages with instem it engages with ccamp to conduct lot of collaborative initiatives instem stands for institute for stem cell science and regenerative medicine ccamp stands for center for cellular and molecular platforms so all these three organizations come together and they conduct number of collaborative initiatives see these three institutions are very important all these three institutions are located in bangalore they form a important part of bangalore bio cluster these organizations play important role in fundamental research 
ട്രാൻസ്ലേഷണൽ സ്റ്റഡീസ് ആൻഡ് ടെക്നോളജി ഡെവലപ്മെൻറ്റ് എൻ സി ബി എസ് ഇൻസ്റ്റം ആൻഡ് സി ക്യാമ്പ് നോ കമ്മിങ് ബാക്ക് ടു എൻ സി ബി എസ് സി നാഷണൽ സെൻറ്റർ ഫോർ ബയോളജിക്കൽ സയൻസസ് ഇസ് എ പ്രീമിയർ റിസർച്ച് ഇൻസ്റ്റിറ്റ്യൂട്ട് ദ മോസ്റ്റ് ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻ്റ് പോയിന്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എ പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ടി ഐ എഫ് ആർ ടി ഐ എഫ് ആർ സ്റ്റാൻഡ്സ് ഫോർ ടാറ്റ ഇൻസ്റ്റിറ്റ്യൂട്ട് ഓഫ് ഫണ്ടമെൻ്റൽ റിസർച്ച് ആൻഡ് എൻ സി ബി എസ് ഇസ് എ പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ടി ഐ എഫ് ആർ നോ മൂവിംഗ് ഓൺ ടു ദ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻ്റ് പോയിന്റ് സി എൻ സി ബി എസ് ഇസ് എ ഒട്ടോണമസ് ബോഡി പ്ലീസ് മേക്ക് നോട്ട് ഓഫ് ഇറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എ ഒട്ടോണമസ് ബോഡി ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഫങ്ഷൻസ് അണ്ടർ ദ ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെൻ്റ് ഓഫ് അറ്റോമിക് എനർജി ഗവൺമെൻ്റ് ഓഫ് ഇന്ത്യ സോ ദീസ് കൈൻഡ് ഓഫ് സ്റ്റേറ്റ്മെൻറ്റ്സ് ക്യാൻ ബി എക്സ്പെക്റ്റഡ് ഇൻ പ്രിലംസ് ദ നാഷണൽ സെൻറ്റർ ഫോർ ബയോളജിക്കൽ സയൻസസ് ഫങ്ഷൻസ് അണ്ടർ ദ ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് അറ്റോമിക് എനർജി വിച്ച് ആർ ദ ഗിവൻ സ്റ്റേറ്റ്മെൻറ്റ്സ് ആർ കറക്റ്റ് സോ മേക്ക് ഷുവർ യു റിമെമ്പർ ദിസ് പോയിന്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഫങ്ഷൻസ് അണ്ടർ ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് അറ്റോമിക് എനർജി So, with this, we have come to the end of the discussion. In this discussion, we saw about NCBS, National Center for Biological Sciences. We discussed why NCBS is in the news. We discussed about the history of NCBS, the functions of NCBS, the significance of NCBS. We discussed about Bangalore Bio Cluster, NCBS Instem Sea Camp. And finally, we discussed what kind of body is NCBS. It is an autonomous body under the Department of Atomic Energy. Now, moving on to the next topic. now moving on to reference articles look at this article this article is regarding pokso act june 28 2021 daily news analysis this video has all the relevant information regarding pokso act interested aspirants can go through it now moving on to the next topic next topic is regarding gst council we discussed about gst council in great detail in our 15th september 2021 daily news analysis few days back this discussion has all the relevant information regarding gst council its composition its roles and function all the relevant information so interested aspirants can go through it next article is regarding sco shanghai cooperation organization september 16 2021 the daily news analysis on this date has all the relevant information regarding shanghai cooperation organization interested candidates can go through it now moving on to practice prelims question Now look at the first question. The National Judicial Appointment Commission was introduced to which of the following constitutional amendment? A. Constitution 65th Amendment Act 1990 B. Constitution 86th Amendment Act 2002 C. Constitution 99th Amendment Act 2014 D. Constitution 101 Amendment Act 2016 From our discussion, we know the answer is option C. 99th Constitutional Amendment Act of 2014 introduced NJAC, National Judicial Appointment Commission. Now moving on to the next question. See this question is a past question. It was asked in the year 2016. In the context of which of the following do you sometimes find the terms amber box, blue box and green box in the news? A WTO office, B SARC office, C UNFCCC office, D India European Union negotiations on FTA. The correct answer is A WTO office. See in WTO terminology subsidies are generally recognized as boxes. they recognized as green boxes amber boxes and blue boxes all the necessary information regarding amber box blue box green box is displayed on the screen interested aspirants can go through it the correct answer is a wto office now moving on to the next question consider the following statements first statement tata institute of fundamental research tifar is a deemed university and works under the umbrella of the department of atomic energy of the government of india second statement India's first digital computer Tifrac was built in TIFR which of the above statements are correct a one only b two only c both one and two d neither one nor two see both the statements are correct TIFR is autonomous institution and it comes under the umbrella of department of atomic energy of government of india so first statement is correct and moving on to the second statement i will look at this figure this figure as tifrac india's first digital computer this digital computer was built by tifr so both the statements are correct the answer is c both 1 and 2 science practice questions are displayed on the screen interested aspirants can write the answer and post in the comment section below if you like this video click like if you want to post a comment post a comment in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to shankar ayes academy channel thank you